Bonjour, mon ami, and welcome to another physio psych lesson in the best possible timeline. Last week we went over the process of synaptic transmission, which is how neurons communicate with one another using neurotransmitters. In today's video, we're going to talk about those synaptic events that we discussed last week in response to cocaine use, and then withdrawal, and finally relapse. We're going to be looking at how the body is constantly trying to recreate homeostasis when you introduce substances that take it away from its genetically coded optimal balance point. So without further ado, let's get into it. So homeostasis is your genetically coded balance point. It's going to be different for everybody uh, because it is genetically coded. It can also change over time as your epigenetics get switched on or off. So there's this balance between the environment and uh, and the the genome, and you can also influence homeostasis artificially through the use of things like drugs, um, whether they be over-the-counter or prescription or illegal. So we're gonna we're gonna get into a little bit of homeostasis right now. So we're gonna we're gonna say we already said that this is in the nucleus accumbens. That's the reward circuit of the brain. Um, and we're going to we're gonna say that this is homeostasis, right? This is what you're genetically coded to feel pretty good. Uh, this individual, we've got we've got a fair amount of dopamine, serotonin. Um, for this example, we're gonna have to add in a little bit of norepinephrine. So let's get another color going. We'll make a few more vesicles, and we'll say our norepinephrine is dark blue. Now we're doing norepinephrine because one of the easier ways to explain homeostasis, at least for me, because I did a senior exit project on this 2,000 years ago, is by showing you what happens to your brain on cocaine. So, this is norepinephrine. Oh, whoops. So, in an attempt to get 
these dopamine receptor sites. These are just going to start disappearing. So now there's less places for binding to occur on the receptor sites. And then it's going to say, you know what else I can do? I'm going to make more enzymes that are going to cut the dopamine in half and render them useless. And so now you're going to have more halved dopamine. So even though it's not getting put back up, it's totally useless. And this, my friends, this is what we call tolerance. This is why you need more and more of the drug to achieve the same effect. Because the longer you, the more you do the drug, the more these other synaptic events are going to be like, you know what? I know how to stop this. Let's stop making so much dopamine. So now, when we put cocaine in our body, and cocaine's just a really easy, straightforward example. That's why I picked it. A lot of the other ones are a lot more complicated. But when we put cocaine in our body and we block the reuptake of dopamine, we also do some stuff that affects serotonin and norepinephrine, but we're not going to talk about that because it's believed that the main effects of cocaine are because of this dopamine uh, reuptake pump being blocked. So when we block the reuptake pump, our body says, okay, we just, we're not going to make so much dopamine anymore. So we need more and more and more cocaine to block more and more and more of these so that the little bit of cocaine, or of uh, dopamine rather, that we are making can, can bind, and that's where tolerance happens, right? Here's where things get really interesting if you're a science nerd like me. Let's say you build up this tolerance. You barely have any access to joy, especially if you're not on cocaine, because now you're an addict. Things, things have really taken a turn. Uh, but you clean up your act. You're like, you know what? I'm going to stop using, oh, that all of a sudden these reuptake pumps they are working again. Let's let's uh, let's make them gold. I guess I don't know. And they're like, I work better than ever. I'm not being blocked. I was being blocked. Let's get it. Let's get all that dopamine and put it back into the presynaptic neuron. So with the tons of dopamine going back into the presynaptic neuron, because your, um, what are these called? Reuptake pumps are working again. You're going to have even less dopamine in the synaptic gap. You're going to have way more enzymes cutting the dopamine in half and you still have less receptor sites, right? This is withdrawal. This is a major bummer. This is, you do not have access to the joy, to the levity, to the motivation that you had before you ever started using cocaine. This is a very bad time. And here's, here's the rub, right? Because it's a very bad time, and being high on cocaine was a pretty good time, this is where relapse is most likely to occur. And unfortunately, because of what's happening in the synapse, it's also where... What's that word? It, because of what's happening in this synaptic gap, it's also where overdose is most likely to occur. Let's get into it. So now your synaptic events and mechanisms are all messed up, right? But slowly, as 
as you stand the pain of withdrawal, things are going to start to come back to homeostasis, right? That's your body's whole thing. It just wants to come back to homeostasis. So it's going to start making new dopamine receptor sites. And it's going to make a ton of them. It's going to make way more than you've ever had before because there's no dopamine up here. It's all being plugged up in there. It's all being cut in half by these guys. So it's going to make so many receptor sites. Then it's going to start to get rid of some of these guys. It's going to say, you know what? Maybe I don't need so many enzymes anymore because we don't have a flood of dopamine problem. So you've got less enzymes rendering these useless by changing their shape. You've got more receptor sites and slowly but surely you're going to start making more dopamine again. so much and